That's what defines your time. When you go back and look at history, art defines your time. I guess I got into glass blowing about 2003. Went to Sheridan. Uh, I was going there to do animation, and then I took the glass program and just have been hooked ever since. Well, I was working at Sheridan for advertising, and I walked by the glass studio, not really happy with what I was doing, and saw some guys blowing glass. And within five minutes, I knew that it was what I needed to do. I was just tired with the direction of my life. Always wanted to pursue an artistic career, and happened to just Google glass blowing and up came Sheridan College. We're showcasing Canadian artists, well not all Canadian artists, just like international artists, most of whom are practicing within Canada. I got into glass blowing uh, about approximately 12 years ago. Six years? God, 16 years now. Maybe 18 or 19 years ago. A lot of galleries have shut down in the past few years, so we opened up, we, we knew a great group of people that have are super talented and have great artwork. Galleries are the most important thing. They're the exposure, the place to uh, collect ideas with other artists, you know, talk to other people, make contacts with the people you need to make contacts with. Frankly, we couldn't be artists if there wasn't amazing galleries like the Leroy Gallery right here. It's a great gallery. I'm just really proud, actually, of Matt and Kyle uh, because they're opening a gallery but not compromising. They're not uh, offering low-end work that they could actually uh, sell readily and make money. They've got a place where they're offering art. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's higher end, so not everyone can afford it, but they're fighting the good fight and uh, sticking to their guns is beautiful. And I just want to support them in any way I can. So I'm, I'm so happy to have my work here. Galleries like Getty Roy over here that definitely uh, gives you a place to um, to show your work and express that and, and getting affiliated with the right groups and committees. The Eddie Roy Gallery is a cool thing because it was started up by a close friends, um, alumni from Sheridan. It's the first big kind of thing that I've seen somebody do this close to to my ear. And it's cool because this gives us a space like locally to like you know show our work and show that we've got a few of us around here. It's somewhat of a new medium. I mean, it's been around for thousands of years. It goes back to 10 AD, so it's a really uh, quite a laborious, long process. It's done with uh, in the furnace, and this is solid, and this is hollow, and it's just been heated and manipulated, and then let cool down to how it is here. So these are some of my signature work here. I think there's an appreciation with the arts and that's been proven over time. When uh, civilizations become defunct, what survives is the artwork, the architecture, and you can actually read a civilization through what's left of uh, an extinct civilization. So I think it's very important that 200 years from now, even a thousand years from now, what presently is going on in the art movement, people will be able to tell how our civilization reacted and interreacted. You go buy something from Ikea, it's a nice face, you can put some flowers in it, something like that. But you get like an artist who's actually put like you know, blood, sweat and tears into making a piece, whatever it may be. And being that it's made of glass, like, it'll last forever, they're just not aware so much that it exists, at least in this uh, respect, right? You know, if you got to decorate your home from Walmart, so you do. And you'll have the same thing as everybody else. But if you appreciate craftsmanship and, you know, the beauty that uh, is in this work. Even if the right work is being made, so that's, that's what kind of would capture more people, you know? 
I mean, nowadays vases are obsolete. I mean, everybody still needs them, but but uh, yeah, you know, there's so much that can be done with the medium itself. Every artist certainly has their own story. The work has its own story. We've got other artists being able to showcase their talents and skills. Like last year, we had Josh Boulay come, and he did this incredible painting for one of our events. We've got musicians. Like we're trying to just build an artist community. I think the idea is just make art, just keep making art. If you just keep making art, eventually everything else will work out. If you make art, just keep doing it. Just, that's the thing. If you love art, I think that buying two-dimensional art is, is one thing, but people should understand that walls aren't just for paintings. 2D can become 3D and it's gorgeous. Glass is a really, really cool medium because it can look like just about anything and it can be just about, it can be fragile, it can be strong, so you know it can be opaque, transparent, and all these different kind of qualities lend it you know, lend it to be hugely conceptual. It's because it's handmade, it's because uh, every artist certainly has their own story, the work has its own story, even the pieces in here, uh, yeah, you know, whether it's the black and white ones or, or the, the running bunnies. Um, they all have uh, uh, something to talk about. As an artist, I like to just change and keep keep pushing the, the boundaries. People get inspired some way, and what they choose to make is always different. What do I like about glass? I like the challenge of it. It's a very challenging medium to work with. I like the optics of it. It's one of a kind. It has that wow factor, especially in the molten state because of the heat, the viscosity of the material, the, the colors of the, the the glass glowing and raw, like kind of primitive quality. It's just like, you know, it's fire and you're just working with the hot glass, it's liquid and, and you're doing your thing. The thing with glass is there's just no medium like it. You can learn something new every single day. The humidity changes, the way the glass moves will change. So it's, uh, it's imperative to stay on your toes, think on your feet, and uh, you're working with something that is ever changing. You learn something every day. It's a constant challenge. They were made in various stages and then assembled hot in the, in the hot shop. So I started off making the head. I have a glass assem uh, assistant that brings me all of my bit work that I apply and I sculpt with a tool, metal tools. In almost anything an artist makes, you know, it's not just a vase or it's not just like an object, like, you know, there's, there's so much behind it. And even even without like a ton of concept, it just, the technical skill it, it takes to actually make something with like clean lines and a nice form, there's, there's something to be said in that, you know? Half the time you're fighting the material because you have to work very quick. You uh, are always battling to control it, yet it controls you. And I like that aspect. We showcase 13 different artists, Canadian glass blowers, and we have an in-house studio where we teach classes. Accessorize your home with, with beautiful works of art from your community. When I'm dealing with my glass, I attempt to put a skin on the glass. So and when I relate it to myself, there's an actual skin that's always changing on top of the glass. My goals are to keep my audience stimulated and by doing that I like to continually evolve my artwork. I don't like to stagnate, I like to make my pieces evolve and change with the times and the time of myself at different periods in my life. So our goal here is to just um, showcase it to the public. We're in a great area and uh, we really want to create a buzz about the scene here. I just want to blow glass.